how's the experience been talking to each player, kind of going over first things that we yeah, it's been really exciting. Uh, I just I feel like the way we finished the season has added, um, you know, it was funny. One of the nights on the way home, I was talking to Kobe after the games, and he made the point about how you, you have to develop habits of winning. And for us to, over the last six, to get five wins, I think it's just a nice – taste for the young guys to say, okay, now we know what it's like to go on a five-game win streak. We can take these habits and we can springboard into the offseason with how we want to develop as players into how we kind of forge our mentality. And I think um, you can feel that energy in the room uh, as we have these exit meeting, meetings too, that the guys, uh, that's going to really add some uh, kind of wind to the sails. The, the value of the five-game win streak outweighs potential lottery, lottery odd combinations that were lost. It's more important to get those wins. You know, listen, I think you have to be prepared for whatever scenario when you're looking at a random event like the lottery. Um, you know, people are asking, do you guys have to have that pick? You know, that's something that I get asked at every single game. Uh, I think we're prepared to have it, and we also have a plan if we don't. I think of there's a lot of stories in Los Angeles sports lore you think of, you know, Kirk Gibson stepping to the plate on one leg against the Oakland Athletics and finding out a way to hit a home run to win the series. You, you think of Magic in the series against the Sixers. They say, oh, by the way, you got to play center. You know, that's maybe like not getting the lottery ball to bounce your way, but you figure out a way to persevere through that challenge and get a championship. Or Kobe. We have to make the playoffs, and he ruptures his Achilles. He walks up to the line. He figures out a way to convert him, and the team makes the playoffs. I think for us, if we get the lottery balls to bounce our way, yes, we have a great attack plan for the draft. But if we don't, just like those sports moments, we have to find a way, and we do have a plan uh, to still get to where our ultimate destination is without the draft pick. Someone told us that you guys told him probably not bring him back next year. How important was it for you guys to, to not be ambiguous with certain players' future? Here? We wanted crystal clarity. And um, listen, the, the one other thing we were clear with Meta is he, he's always welcome here. I think what he stands for in terms of who he is as a human being um, and to think of some of the adversity and different things he's overcome in his life. Um, He's just a player. Everyone loves his work ethic. Everyone loves his commitment to being the best version of himself, um, to caring about other people and what he meant for our young players um, and how he was a leader all season long. So um, I think, you know, he made it clear he probably still wants to try to play. Um, but when that journey's over, we just know that he's going to always be a big part of the Los Angeles Lakers just in what he stand for and what he's accomplished for our organization. Rob, Rob where, where do you and Magic feel of, you know, one degree of having it, whatever patience with the young board to develop versus being aggressive and making any roster moves this offseason? I think it's both, right? So um, you've... You, you never want to just make a trade to say, oh, we need to go make a splash. But everything we want to do is, is we want to be really, really thoughtful, deliberate, intelligent. And so, you know, as we speak, teams that are out of the playoffs can start to entertain trade discussions. So we have a call to action to make our roster better. Um, we know the ways that can be done. That can be done with the draft lottery. That can be done with trades. It can be done in free agency. We are daily cranking out scenarios uh, of ways we can improve. Um, and then along with that, we know we have to have uh, an accountability system of excellence to grow our young players. And we are already working on putting things in place to help our guys develop um, one of the things that, that we're going to put into place is, uh, is a wellness coordinator here who's, who's looking at things like guys' sleep habits, their nutrition habits, their lifting regimen, um, their training. 
and making the, sure the, the efforts are really, really coordinated for the player development. So I think you got to be firing on all cylinders to reach greatness, and we're looking at that every day. Rob, the decision to have Kobe meet with Brandon, Luke has talked about obviously Brandon's a better player than he was, and there's only so much. How receptive was was Kobe to this, and kind of what's the mindset from your standpoint of having Brandon meet with him and work out with him? Co- you know, listen, Kobe uh, has been receptive to working with lots of players in the offseason. I mean, he benefited so much because he was aggressively, as you guys know, reaching out to the greats throughout his whole career and getting bits and pieces from them and being inspired by them. Whether it's Michael Jordan or Akeem Olajuwon, he just had a, a curiosity for the game. And I think for our, a young player like Brandon to tap into the guys at the highest level of, of an obsession with excellence and to learn what that means, I think is critical. So we also encourage Brandon and all the young guys, that's got to come from within. We're, we're not big on, on a philosophy of us mandating action X, action Y, and action Z. There's got to be a hunger and a desire from the player themselves to say, how do I make myself better? You know, and we've told all the young guys, whatever resources they need from us as an organization, those are going to be available to them to reach the best version of themselves as basketball players and to hit the mark of excellence that's going to be expected here. Do you see, a, do you see that hunger and desire in them? You know, one of the things I've been impressed with our young core is I see that hunger and desire from a lot of our guys. And, you know, it's our job to foster it. You know, Julius Randle talked about how he wants to get, continue to get stronger and faster. Um, you know, we're going to meet with Zoo here, and he's talked about how he wants to shape, you know, reshape his body um, and his fitness. Um, you know, D'Angelo's talked about. Um, just his defense and making a commitment there. So I think all of our guys know that the standard that that Magic and I are going to employ and work with Luke on is going to be higher. Um, and guys that aren't committed to excellence um, won't be here. Um, and I, I would say that about our own staff too, I, about myself. We all have to be committed to excellence every day. Um, and if we're not, we don't belong here because that's what the Lakers stand for. The Lakers stand for excellence. You, you mentioned, you know, both, obviously you guys want to get better as quickly as you can, but also you don't want to make moves for the sake of making them. What is hard? Like the moves sort of that you make, that you consider, that excite you, or the one, or, or holding off and waiting? Because you know, both of them are active forces. You know, I think the biggest thing is preparation for the moves. And I, we, we have databases of information that we're looking at now. So when a decision becomes ripe and you're saying, is this a red light or a green light, you have all the information at your fingertips to make it, whether it's a trade or whether it's a draft choice. But, um, you know, we're meeting every day with our scouting department. Um, We're doing advanced things in pro scouting now and with the draft. Um, But I think sometimes you have to say no. But I'm a big believer in this. I'd rather have a hundred opportunities to look at and say no 99 times and one yes than not look at those hundred things and then you get zero yeses, right? So I think you've got to be out there aggressively pursuing options. You've got to put things in motion. You've got to um, be turning over every stone. Even if, like I said in that example, there's 99 no's, at least you got the one yes. If you're just sitting back and waiting for things to come to you, you'll never get the 100 opportunities. I've asked this of all the players in Luke. The, the team didn't win a lot of games this year, but how was the year a successful year for the Lakers? Listen, I think the first of all, I, one big word for me right now is, is, is gratitude. I, our fans were incredible this year. They, they, you know, uh, Coach Cal from Kentucky came to our game the other night to see Julius Randle, and he looked up and he was like, man, I expected this place to be half full. And the buzz in the building when we won those five games in a row, I mean, it was amazing. Like, our fans, I think, are excited about our young players, and I think we have such loyal fans. And that's one of the things that, really motivates me every time I get out my Lakers key fob and I go to the practice facility door to walk to my desk in the morning I just think about it I think about 
really the commitment from our fans and how we have an obligation to deliver winning and championships to them. But um, I think that's part of our success, and I think they see the hope, and I think they see the growth in our young core. Hey, Rob, t- talent evaluation is was certainly a part of your uh, last job as well. But how, how does that shift, if at all, in your current spots, looking at your own players, watching games, watching tape, looking around the league? Uh, how do you how have you gone about that and with Magic and the rest of the staff as you kind of think about shaping this roster? You know, it's interesting. Uh, I think of that commitment to excellence and that. And I, if the other day, we're going to demand that as a excellence out of our players and out of our staff. And I was thinking the other day, uh, Magic and I had a meeting up at the headquarters of Apple. And he was up at 3 in the morning um, getting his workout in and preparing for our meeting. We were talking to each other at 7 in the morning, going over our notes, you know, to fly up there. Had our meeting. It was it was really amazing. Then flew back, went to the game. You know, he's leaving the arena 11 p.m. after getting up at 3 in the morning. It, that's where excellent comes from, from preparation. So in a roundabout way, the way I'm going to answer your question is we are so prepared in how we're evaluating guys that could be in the draft, free agents that might come up this July or next July, and then players on teams that you think you might have a chance to, to, to trade for. Um, I think it's a combination of analytics. It's a combination of game film. It's a combination of... Um, talking to a lot of people around the league and getting a sense of who players are. But I will tell you that there's going to be a very high value for us on guys of character, um, guys of integrity, and guys that have a high basketball knowledge. Um, Those are really important things to Coach Walton. He's made that clear to Magic and I. And um, as we improve this roster and build it, those are things that we're going to be looking at. Jeannie was on a podcast, Tim was the Forest podcast, and an All Star Games in Los Angeles this year. She said along the lines of that it would break her heart for the Lakers to not have an All Star. And while you have a lot of young players who may be All Stars one day, it might be presumptive to assume they get their, they may play like All Stars, they may not get the vote. So how do you approach that as a general manager where you want to make sure your owner is happy? Well, I think Jeannie's call, and I think. You know, our, what we're working for is to bring a championship to the Lakers. I think, um, I think her point about having an All Star. We all know to get to a championship, you're going to probably need multiple All Stars on your roster. So, I think that's a step towards the ultimate destination. Um, I don't think that's our end destination to say, oh, we have to have um, this by such and such time. But clearly, part of our strategy is to take this amazing, unique megawatt platform of Los Angeles and all that it is and you know I've had so many people like the titans of industry are are reaching out and one of the other things we're going to do next season for our players is we're going to have enrichment programs where um, leaders in their industry um, in the movie industry artists um, are going to come and talk to our players about excellence and about their road um, to excellence in their craft and it's amazing that just the calls that Magic and I are getting from, from the true titans of business that are going to come and help our players become better human beings. Um, you can just feel the energy of the city. There's a new vision, and, and um, we're all in this together. Our stakeholders, our fans, the, the people that sit courtside, um, we're going we're gonna to get there. Do you, do, you, do you anticipate that you will be able to – bring in a star next year? I anticipate that there are many stars that understand how unique this Los Angeles Laker platform is. And I am fully convinced that um, we will have one or more than one come. Um, To put a timetable on it, I I can't do that. But um, I do think that as we engage in conversations with – voices of influence there the, it seems like the current of the river has shifted and whereas in past years it was gosh I don't even know if we're going to get meetings with certain players you can just feel a current uh shifting now towards us of excitement of 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 gosh I think that's going to be a huge destination whether it's people in the media saying they want to be drafted here now or whether it's um 
you know, just rumblings you hear about players that, that want to come to L.A. You can feel the current shifting our way again. Do you, do you, feel, like you, do you feel like you have as, in, as much information as you need to know with the players that you have on this team right now? Do you feel like you know which ones are, are those players who are committed to excellence, which ones are part of your future, or are you still needing more information to sort of really have that firm again? Well, I think true excellence is a process. It's an unfolding process. You know, I don't think it's a destination. And I think that we are evaluating which of the players on the roster are going to buy into that process and make it a habit in their lives. Um, I think it's too early to assess definitively which are and which aren't. But I think all of us, you know, as an organization are called to that. We're committed to that. We're excited about it. It's not a judgment uh, a top-down judgment from management on everyone else. It's all of us looking in the mirror and being committed to that. Uh, Rob, you, you know. talked about having a plan if that ping-pong ball does not fall your way. <coughs> if you have that plan. If that ping-pong ball does fall your way, can that be a parallel universe that that other plan could work with getting this uh, top three pick? Yeah, I think, you know, listen, the beauty of, of what Irvin was able to pull off before I accepted the position of general manager. We have, no matter what, we have a first round pick this year. Um, so we're already in a position of strength. And then if that top three ping pong ball enters our way, we have a number of contingencies of how that could play out. And if it doesn't, then again, we have that fallback position of a first round pick already. And then we would have our pick in 2018. So, um, you know, I, I think I had said to someone the other day, the, the destination of getting to a championship might be like a Rubik's Cube. You know, you're, you're looking at, at this thing and it's got all these different colors and you've got to get them to all line up. There's a thousand different ways to turn the cube and to get it so it all lines up, but you're going to eventually do it. That's how I look at this. Maybe you have the pick, maybe you don't, but you've got to continue to make moves and turn it until you have that complete perfect picture. And that's what we're doing every day. And that's what we're analyzing and looking at. So. Thanks, guys.